Greetings and welcome to The Thirsty Mage, the podcast that has promised to keep the cat-related puns to a meownium. That might be the last one. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Jordan Rudek, your host for this episode. And today we're sharing our opinions on a cat quest or three, and even smaller Link's Awakening like, and the good old Nintendo Switch online service. Here with me, still working on perfecting the art of swashbuckling, it's Paige Chamberlain. See, if I had thought about it, I would have written down some for the notes, but <laughs> but yeah, I have um I just finished basically playing the entirety of the Cat Quest trilogy. Um since the third one released on August um eighth, I think. Yes, on the Thursday. Um so and like the day before that I beat Cat Quest two and a bit before that I beat Cat Quest one. <laughs> so um I'm, I know all about it now. <laughs> And this this wasn't a review project for you. You were just you just wanted to play them. Yeah, I think um, I'm at a point where I sort of I think I'm ten hours into like three different forty hour RPGs, and I'm sort of stuck on them. So I was just playing something else. To... You needed so. something a little bit more cat sized, as opposed yeah. to yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, okay, so yeah, I want to get into these. I want to hear all about these. I, I've, I've probably played maybe like a demo of one of them at some point. Uh, I know the third one just came out, so that, that's uh, definitely topical. Um, what what was the kind of reasoning behind wanting to get into these games in particular? So you're looking for something a little smaller, a little more bite sized compared to the larger RPGs. What made you think, okay, I got to play these Cat Quest games? Um, I think the third one coming up was probably it, really, because I bought the um, first two in a Pawsum pack when that released a couple of years ago, like physically. Um, and I did sort of try playing, because Cat Quest 2 is the one that has, well, the two and three have co op, but the first one doesn't. Mm. Um, so I tried to play that with my husband, but at the time he was just really not into it. Um, but with the the game come upcoming, I decided to play Cat Quest One because that was the one I'd have to do single player anyway. So I went through that, um, and then just kept. Going. <laughs> and then I wanted more. So, so for for the uninitiated, what what is Cat Quest? If if someone if one of our listeners has never heard of this game or this series before, what what is it exactly? Um, so it's a pretty basic action RPG. It's I I guess you'd call it top down visually. It's um. You basically walk on across like the world map and it's got like you know like, the locations written down so someone says kind of cartography style but you know but still with grass and things like that um so in the first one you're a cat and you're called the dragon blood because um dragons have been um just on this kingdom of cats and dragons have been a problem in the past and they're coming back again and you know you're the only one with the power to defeat the dragons so you've got a big mark on your head um and so it's pretty – I was trying to <laughs> double check if you had like a um, heavy attack because I can't remember, but you definitely got your attack, a roll, and then you unlock magic spells, which um, generate – like you generate your mana back by just doing basic you know, attacks. And I, I know that in the first game magic is especially busted because um, the way – it's sort of – it's mostly sort of open world, so you could basically like go wherever you want except – the middle area between a lot of places is really, and it makes you go through it, has really strong enemies. It's not until like the end of the game, the, even after the end of the game, that you'd be strong enough to really face on your own. Um, and they have a spell called Cat Trap where like they place spikes on the ground. Um, and when you eventually get that spell, like I found it on a spooky island, um, it's very busted. <laughs> mm. So it's That's really for the useful. first game. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's in the second game like a little bit, but I don't remember getting it as a spell. So I think they <laughs> – um, one of the main things is, yeah, there's lots of there's, – there's so many puns you don't even like notice them at that point. Um, yeah, and the original, the main story is kind of somewhat basic. I, I will sort of spoil that like – the setup of these worlds is that the um, these cats were originally made by humans, and the dragon bloods were, um, yeah, made like project made by humans, um, and they're gone now. But that's sort of the setup in terms of like the overarching plot between the three. There's that connection, um, but no. <laughs> Yeah, the main writing I think that is appealing is the side quests. Okay, like okay. that's where all the the funny stuff is. And there's you want to do, yes, yeah, so that's like you've got a lot of side quests. You've got a lot of caves um, where you go in. So it's sort of not 
like mini dungeon esque. Like you gotta kill all the monsters for the last treasure chest to open, or there's um, spike traps, especially in the second game. <laughs> like not the spell, but just like you gotta watch out for them. Um, so like there's a lot of that to do. So basically, like you're like because it's level based, like you've got levels and gear and all that stuff. So if it is too hard, you just go do your side quests, and then you have money to upgrade your spells and your gear. Um, and then you can take on the the next dragon, basically. But yeah, the side quests are very, um, like in all the games, there's this area called like the Twin Towns where it's connected to like, like you have one person on one side ask you to do something and they go back and they disappear and then the same person on the other side asks you. So you gotta figure, okay. <laughs> you got to figure out what's going on with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then in the... Um, and then there's a the quest where a bunch of villagers are desperately asking you for meat, so you go like do that, and then they're like trying to eat you basically. Oh, <laughs> and it gets, it's very funny because it's very kid friendly, but there's like a couple of side quests um, related to like the meat one and some of the ones that like that where it's like oh this is really really dark. <laughs> well, see that, that's what I was gonna kind of ask about that like about the balance and stuff because it looks very cartoony. It does look like you know again we we hate and and love to use this the expression like baby's first rpg or baby's first action rpg or something like that um, but I, I look at it and i watch the gameplay i'm like oh it seems yeah very maybe more family friendly kid oriented kind of game but if there's harder parts or that kind of dark humor in there right that maybe that's going to go over their head or something like that and, and as yeah, adults, I think they can realize oh it's kids not, shouldn't, re- kids shouldn't read that it's not full-on dark humor but the ones with the meat quest where it's like they're eating this um enchanted meat and then they turn into monsters and you're like wow that's really yeah um yeah. intense and then like you know sometimes characters die um not like because most of the time you're beating someone like they're just you know they're not we're not necessarily besides from the monsters knowing if they're dead but like this time yeah story-wise um that happens once or twice you know um but it is mostly kid-friendly like it's at least of the age where they can read it anyway because <laughs> of all the puns yeah um, and then in yeah in the first game you get the ability water walking, um, so that's how those parts of the map bl- are blocked off to you, um, because you just can't go around like into the lake where there's a big dragon. So that's why you get prompted to do it. Um, one thing that was annoying about the first game was that it would always point to the main quest unless you picked up a side quest, and then it would point to that. But sometimes you had to do a side thing. Um, to get to like a point to the dragon but you needed to do something before you could get to the dragon and it would just keep pointing to the dragon instead of where you need to go so you did have to just look around yourself and you can't um, choose like which one to be highlighted or which one to focus on or something no you've got to basically pick up a side quest as the only way got to it get, yeah, yeah that's okay. the priority um but that's definitely it. and then there's lots of hard stuff too i didn't do a lot of the post game stuff um although it was funny though um it was like we should uh, we should do it's like we should do these um side areas before we do the final boss and i was already 10 levels above the side areas that were meant to level me <laughs> right okay um but there's this because there's like a lot of yeah higher level stuff and um, there's like um in i think almost all the games i don't know if i saw it in three there's like an area with like a level 200 enemies and it's like you can't as far as i'm aware you can't get to level 200 in the like you know original playthrough or whatever but basically like if you dodge you could p- take them out because like you can deal damage to them decently so it's just more of like a a trick um and then there was these golden chests everywhere and i could never found the keys and it turns out it's just like on an island where you have to like beat the devs to get any of this cool stuff (laughs) well that's kind of neat it sounds like there's a lot of like hidden stuff or Mm. like smaller mysteries and secrets to find for for those who are really into these games like yeah you could you could mainline them or if you want to do more side content or spend more time in these worlds you have you have that option um yeah so how so how much so you you were using these as kind of a distraction from the longer RPGs? How much time did you spend in each of these games? Um, then? Well, I'm not sure because I no longer ha- you know how on the Switch you have to put on the print of controls if you want to get an accurate time of That's how right. long you yeah. play to get yeah. yeah. Um, so I haven't done that, but okay. most things say the games are roughly like nine hours or so, and like yeah, so oh, I that's don't not know bad. for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely. I when I was playing through it, I wrote you know not to disparage the game, but it's definitely a board and buster because you're just like ooh cave and like um, it shows you like the like the recommended level before you go in or whatever. So you know, okay, I can't do <laughs> better not do that right now. But I mean, it's like ooh cave, ooh side quest, ooh like you just keep going from one thing to the next because you can see it as you go. Um, and then one thing that's in Cat Quest One, that's not in any of the other ones, is that you unlock flying. 
Um, and the clothes I was wearing at the time was like the king's cape. So I didn't realize that you fly by flapping your arms until I picked a different outfit. <laughs> oh, just like in real life. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um and it, that's that's like i think that's just really helpful when you're like at the end game thing but it's it's kind of funny that they didn't bring it back you know even for the second game it, it is funny that so many games uh that we've played introduce flying uh, or airships or something at the end of the game when you're like oh but i've already seen everything and yeah, yeah i guess sometimes you want to go back or whatever and that, that can be helpful but um I, so i was gonna ask you you said the first game no co-op but no. two and three did have co-op did you yes. try that Yes. Okay, so I yeah. was this time able with Cat Quest to able to convince my husband to um, play it in co op. And he seemed to enjoy it a bit more the second try around. Um, and yeah, in two, it's, the theme is the cat kingdom versus the dog kingdom. So one of you is a cat, one of you is a dog. You've both got like the, um, like the two numerals on the back of your heads. Okay. Because um, like the cat, the main cat's always got something on the back of their head in these games, like their special mark. Um, and. You're called like the the king's blood, so you've got like the royal blood, but the current kings are bad and they're perpetuating this war. Um, and it's yeah, it's pretty similar to the first game, except it's a lot bigger because you've got two continents. <clears throat> and it takes place um, a fair few generations after the first game, so I don't know like how similar the map on the first one is because it doesn't seem very similar, but maybe the general shape is. And there's no there's no story carryover, right? Like these are separate games. Um, you don't need to have played one or th- one before, or one after, or something like that. There sort of is. Like okay. you don't have to because like the main plot, whatever. But like the overarching plot is to do with the origin of these cats. Um, okay, so there is there is some continuity. So then. like the end the end boss of two is really sort of tied into that. But like some of the stuff sort of gets explained. But it was funny though because playing too you got a lot of like, you know, the, the, this quest is the same. Like there's, there's another meat quest. There's another Twin Town quest, you know, things like that. There was even like a Batman ripoff <laughs> quest that was really funny. Nice. I think I posted it in the chat where it was like um, two fur face and he's like, this is what happens when you fall into a shallow vat of cats. Cause he was like, Oh yes, half, yes. I did see, I did yeah, see that. And, <laughs> and that was, that was a funny, it was a really funny joke actually, because I've, I've been watching the new Batman series on Amazon and two faces in that one too. Or like, it's kind of like an origin for, for a lot of the villains and stuff like that. So I was watching that around the time when you posted that joke, I'm like, Oh, that, that, that that's quite funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, so more of like kind of not breaking fourth wall, but like that kind of pop culture type humor is in, in there too. Mm. Yeah, lots of that. Um, and, yeah, so it's, it's pretty similar, but, like, it's bigger. Um, one of the main differences is that even if you're playing in single player, the second character is with you because it's part of the story. Um, so then you've got a little, like, if you're not playing cop, you have a little buddy. And he's at your kid, so it's, like, it's actually pretty helpful. Like, I did a bunch of side quests and stuff because we needed to be, like, ten levels ahead for the next story part recommended. Um, and he was actually very useful. Um, so I ended up being, <laughs> being 10 levels ahead of what I needed to be. Um, but the, I think that there's some differences, like a little bit other than like more. Um, so such as you've got um, the spells are slightly different. Like I don't, I saw some enemies towards the end get the cat trap, but I, like, I don't think we had it. Um, and the enemies are a bit tough. Like in the start, you're like, whoa, because um, like they always have like little AOE markers, but like they also, the basic enemies now shoot out projectiles and the projectiles really hurt in this game. So you just, you got to pay a bit more attention and it can get a bit hard when you're like, you crowded together like that. Um, and then the benefit of playing co-op is that you can sort of revive each other unless they're standing on a really bad spot. Like sometimes yeah, it's, easier to, it's easier to finish it off yourself sometimes. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> but you got to like kite around them um and then it's really fun too because you can you got the spells which are an important i think a pretty important part of these games um and so like i've got the the healing spell for this game so i'd be like come over here for a se- <laughs> second i need to fix you i um, mean he'd have the sh- um shield and the like attack up which makes you bigger so like you'd be um pretty like support heavy while also dealing a lot of damage um so these so- are like different classes or something like that or just different um, abilities just you have um, different weapons. Oh, I forgot weapons, that in okay. the first first game, you know, you can have an axe or like a sword, or you can have a magic rod. Um, I never really used the magic <laughs> rods though. Like I just uh, unless I swapped to, to to like you know just pause and like swap for a particular enemy, but you know I just have the magic spells and when I need them. Um, so there's not there's not classes, but gear in all of these games is like a pretty big thing. So I ended up doing some side quest and I got the bard gear, and that 
um, made my mana regenerate more. So I would be dropping spells like all the you know, drop spells. That's spell, like, yeah. So I was yeah. like, I, t- I had all the attack spells, and then I was just manually attacking to get it back, and that would be back quick, and then I'd psh, like just tearing through guys pretty. There's something very satisfying about having the ability to spam magic spells, damaging spells pretty often that that you almost always feels pretty good. Um, And one of the things I didn't realize was so they do updates for these games. So for Kakos 2, they did a Mew World update. So a lot of the stuff that I was experiencing was actually like not in the base game. And I'm like, I'm glad I played it. For, you know afterwards because mm, i didn't have yeah. sprinting in the base game or there's all these little trial bits you go in and um it's like you're in a small arena and you have to go through like three waves of enemies and like that's not in that wasn't in it originally um and certain things like the when you roll it attacks it damages enemies in that game like um and uh, when i think about it like the those towers sort of look like they had they were naturally there, but there's other markers that are put down to give you some powers. I'm like, yeah, I get like not while I was playing it, but after I found out that I'm like, yeah, I can see how they were just sort of put wherever. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so yeah, we didn't complete like these two games just because like we finished Cat Quest two like the night before three came out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely really fun and like um, it's it's kind of sad that the first one isn't co op just because it's you know you can't go through like the whole series together. Yeah, I guess it, it is one of those things they they learn over time. Like okay, a game comes out, and Dave and I talked about this uh, a month or so ago about just about indie indie devs or smaller teams getting kind of that feedback of like okay, they read reviews about the first game. What did people like? What did they not like? What do they want to see more of? And then the sequel gives them that opportunity to add or change those things. And so um, you do, or, or I guess that's the funny thing about like people complaining, well, too many sequels, too many sequels, but sequels are that that opportunity for you know developers to do the things they wanted to do or, or maybe do them better or listen to feedback and improve upon those things. So you, you can kind of see it, not just from like, a marketing standpoint why sequels would sell better or would be a good thing because then people will go back if they buy like you, you mentioned page like you wanted to play one and two you bought it previously but you wanted to play those games specifically because three was coming out if three wasn't coming out well maybe you don't go back and play those games or something like that right it, doing more sequels does encourage people to go back and play the earlier stuff as well so there's that kind of business another yet another business reason why uh, you know teams would want to do uh, uh do more sequels especially when um no i've lost what i was gonna say <laughs> um I, I don't know what i was gonna say just then but um use a cat I, pun I to bring a, you back no focus i had, here, I, had this- a, I had a cause I, cause I had a second train i thought where i was like you know because i bought that pack and then they're releasing a physical for the individual three but then okay. after the day like you know the day after it comes out they're like okay they're doing a fantastic trilogy pack as of well. of course yeah and i Basically. i was just i just saw that on playstation <laughs> all three games are bundled right now but um, the, for those who haven't picked them up the game for one and two seem to be like heavily discounted right now yeah they usually uh, on like, switch and and playstation I, I think, saw, so i think they're worth like the price are asking they're quite cheap like australian wise the third game's only like 25 bucks and the other two are cheaper yeah. um but um but yeah, I think, and the sequel thing, yeah. So because they're shorter too, it's not like it's, you know, like some games, the sequels don't sell better because like I didn't even finish the first game. I'm not going to. Sure, sure. And that's like this one's like it's short enough that you're like, well, I can, <laughs> I can finish the first game <laughs> or two. Yeah, but it's like, ah, oh, um, yeah, I mean, I don't mind that they've done like this. They're doing a physical of that three pack, and I'm like, oh, well, I've got one and two as one and three as well. I'm fine. But it's just, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> So, so you you so you played the third game. How, have you finished that one as well? Or yes, you're, you I know... finished that a couple of days ago. Okay, yes. I did finish that one. Yeah. Um, so this one is cats versus pirates. Um, so that's like a, another species that's been brought out. Um, this one is yeah, very pirate themed, which I think is very funny because there are so many like boat themed games coming out this year. I was like the same day, although Australia was a day later, but like you know, Steam World Heist Two is Cat Quest Three. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Mario Luigi Brothership's coming out. We're getting East Ten Nordics. Um, there's probably others like there's Dredge DLC coming out again. Like <laughs> so many boat games coming out. It's really funny. Um, this one I know some reviews I saw said you know oh there wasn't much of a change, but like I found having you know just played the other two like just before it, I'm like there, there's quite a few changes. Like the camera angle sort of closer so that feels a bit weird but like you can kind of actually see more that way um and the aoe markers are gone 
but they so instead of having a red circle like they're going to jump here, they jump higher, and okay. then there's a mark after they've done the attack. So I think you just got to pay like a little bit more attention, but it might make things easier because like when you're in those crowded bits where you get surrounded with enemies, it's like why well, you can't even like. <laughs> Oh, you, know, you see it's red, like a tuck area. So are, are you almost learning patterns more than like telegraphing stuff or just trying to, um, I guess, react to it or something like that? Yeah, a little bit more because you're not, okay. you're not being directly shown to you. It's like telegraphed a bit, but yeah, yeah. not, not the um, yeah, same. And in this game, you have a boat because you are, so you don't have to, you don't, so this is the one game where you don't have water walking because, <laughs> because you have you a have boat. you have a boat, you don't need so to walk. Yeah. You just go on the boat. Um, and the boat is also something that can get upgraded. So you find things in the treasure chest at the game, so you can give it some more special shots, which you need to destroy gates to get to certain areas. You've got um, more HP. You can like dash and attack, so things like that. Because um, there'll be yeah, just like other pirate ships around, and you have to beat them because they're just kind of in your way. Um, it is funny though, because if you like lead them to the shore, you can also like manually attack the boats, but you will get hit pretty hard by the boat if you are not in a boat yourself. <laughs> Self. Mm, not and, a good idea for a for a cat well, to fight a boat. <laughs> well, you don't have water walking because you have little floaties, like little rings. Mm, that's cute. But you can't attack when you're in that. So, Which um, bit... I, I don't know. You mentioning boat games. I don't know. If, did you mention Ease Nordics as well? Yes, that's going to be so that's yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that that's the one that uh, as soon as you mentioned like boat boat combat or kind of like a boat opening gates and stuff like that. Uh, I went to a preview when a uh, preview event a couple of weeks ago for East 10 Nordics. And um, that was kind of the, the thing that stood out to me was that, Oh, there's like ship combat now, or there's like ship encounters and, and just like, that's the big thing that they're adding here. So yeah. Um, total tangent, obviously, but in, in the theme of boats for sure. See, I'm like, I probably shouldn't get that on the switch, but that's the only version that's getting physical here. So, <laughs> Oh, is that right? Oh, that's yeah. too bad. Yeah. I'm yeah. Obviously remains to be seen. Uh, the, some of the East ports have been a little bit, uh, um, lacking uh, in terms of uh, switch functionality and, and performance. So we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to see about that one. But um, so what, so after so you finished three cat quest games, basically what, what's, what's the ranking? How do you, what would you tell people to do? Should they hop into one of the three in particular, if they were only going to play one? Um, well, I wanted to keep talking about three a bit more first. Oh, so. please. No, sorry. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm um, all excited about the, the, the Like I said, there's and... a few differences. Like, yeah, but I said, there's the boats. Yeah, please. Um, please. There's a bounty system as well. So, like, you go in. Um, so, like, the, you see this giant rubber duck with a pirate hat and a cannon for a mouth, and he's, like, the top bounty. And he doesn't attack you, though, so you don't have to be too scared, like, unless you attack him. And then the sky turns, like, red, and he shoots lasers from the sky. And, um... It's a little terrifying. <laughs> yeah, but um, so our trick with that, oh, the thing when you're playing in, so in this one, the cop is optional. So basically, um, oh, and the cop is improved. I forgot to complain. In two, basically, if you want, okay, you could enter buildings without the other one, but like if you wanted to start a quest, the other one had to be like right there with you. Mm, yeah. And then like if you move too close, you had to step back and get really close again. <laughs> like it was really oh, geez. That's very finicky, annoying. Yeah. Um, but now they fixed that where it's like just one of you has to do it. And then it'll be very funny because they'll be having like this cutscene over here and the other cat's just standing there with their back, back turned. Like they don't, yeah, I like that. They don't care. But it's uh, so much better. I kind of hope that they fix the, <laughs> the second one for that because it was so annoying. Um, and then you can drop them in and out at any safe point too. Mm, yeah, um, drop Although them, drop I did them. do this one. Bad. Uh, this one actually kind of felt, I don't know if it actually was short or if it just felt like it because we were just like really, <laughs> like we'll be playing much longer sessions. Um, so, but we, yeah, we played through there, like everything um, that we, pretty much everything we could of it um, co-op. Besides from like, because I looked up like a trophy list because we were playing on Switch, so we don't have that. I think the only things we didn't do was like, you know, get every bit of equipment. Um, there's an infinity tower. So once you do it like the first time you go down, it's just sort of like a timer goes down basically and when you like get to a certain point the timer goes up a little bit so it's just trying to like beat the enemies as fast as you can and i guess you get different rewards for it um i don't know if there is a certain end or not because it's cold infinity but you know maybe it ends at 100 or something um 
Yeah, so whenever someone, that, whenever it's one of those where we don't know where it ends, I am not usually inclined to find it. Yeah, <laughs> like just, um, someone will beat it. I'll take their word for and, it. And and there's me. some like rocks where you've got to hit them in a specific order. So like we didn't do that, but we did all the bounties. We did like all the caves, all the dungeons. Um, one thing with this, it kind of felt like there was less side quests, but I think it was more that they were just a bit more involved um, because now there's a lot less caves, but then the, the camera angle on the caves is pretty zoomed in. Um, but we have these like dungeon areas and they're like 2D. You do have like the – I actually don't know if you have the lanes. Maybe when you're not – yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, they're like straight side-scroller. Mm. um sections oh, okay, which okay. which definitely made some of the bosses a bit harder because you're just like oh wait, how do i dodge this <laughs> i can't dodge it um i think one thing my husband was complaining about is like the dodge dodge roll doesn't actually really give you much if any invulnerability frames mm. uh, <laughs> so he's like so, so what's know, the point we, yeah we've <laughs> switched we've switched to um we started playing because the cult of the lamb cop update came out so we we started playing that now and it's like wow the, do- the dodge roll is a lot nice <laughs> Yeah, nice, um, uh, nice contrast there. But yeah, these these side quests are a lot more interesting because like there's one where it's like we found a book in some cave and then we find this like tower that looks like the book. So we go in and where um this guy is like a ghost and he's like, oh, you need to like rewrite the story of my love so I can like be at peace. And you go in and it's sort of like a choose your own adventure, like you choose the left or right option to like say what happens and then a fight might occur and you have to take care of it because of that. Mm, that's um, cool. so that was, and then there was this golden tower and we had to find the keys to do it um and then every so often you'd find a coin and it would just start running away from you and you'd have to chase the coin and then like that would usually be a key um and that's how you like unlock the levels in the golden tower um although the item for that wasn't particularly interesting like you get a hat and it's like uh more you know generate more gold or more damage per gold but like when i was like end game i tested it and it was like uh, i only dealt 100 more damage <laughs> And I had and lots that's, of gold. So that's, so not, lots. that's not a lot more, yeah. No, in this game you okay. have money coming out. You're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's pirate theme, it's treasure theme. And the magic is also on a different system. You Like, it's not money because it's basically where you'd sink all your money in, in the first two games is the magic. Um, in this one it's like it's a different currency basically So um, and very expensive, so it's like a lot harder to just – we did use magic still, like my original spells, but like we obviously didn't become – we became overpowered because of different reasons. Um, okay. They added more weapons. Like, we never really liked the shields because the benefits would be, like, on blocking. So, like, if you're really into parrying, that'll work. But you also have guns now. And the yeah, ammo guns, just... are, guns are generally more fun than blocking with a shield, yes. I think. Um, and you can have two weapons now. So you can have a sword or, like, whatever else. And then uh, for the button press, you switch to your gun or the magic rod. Um, which they had, they gave one use for the magic rod in one of the dungeons. I had to switch to that because you had to use it to dodge out of something, like because the dodge roll with the magic weapon actually like teleports you. So like you actually oh, do have invulnerability. Hmm. <laughs> so, but that was like just this one little section. Um, so yeah, the guns are like they have a certain amount of ammo per type of gun, and then if you completely shoot it out, you got like wait ages for it to refill. Um, or like if you like leave the last one, it fills up faster, but then the last one usually has a special effect. Um, but this game, the the builds is like it's really you can make such busted builds. And I remember one of the viewers complaining that like ice powers were busted, and I didn't use ice powers; I was using lightning powers because I think it does kind of the same thing, where it just sort of shocks them for a bit, whereas ice slows them down. Um, and then we'll be giving these items, and it was like you know, increase your lightning attack by ten percent, increase um, you know the last strike of your combo will be lightning. So you just, and then I had the two lightning spells. So I'm just lightning, lightning, like, like Yeah, everything. everything's kind of synergizing with lightning here. <laughs> yeah, so you can really, like, just be the specific thing. Um, and then uh, my husband was more the support this time around. Oh, yeah, one, one, ben- one difference is you can be a girl cat in this game. It's like just just that you have eyelashes pretty much, I think. Maybe hair is different. Um, but it's funny, though, because you can't choose between – like second player also has to be the girl cat, but then when when oh, we got the end, okay. so, we got so when you the, choose co op, they both have to be the same. Yeah, but, yeah, which That's is funny. so hopefully they update that. One other thing, I hope they patch um, your eye patch. Just check, you know, when they just sort of like mirror the sprite or whatever, they don't. So when you turn around, your eye patch is on another eye. 
Oh right, okay. <laughs> yeah. I I really hope they fix that because like it, you weren't you weren't playing the game doesn't matter too much, but you do notice it on your main characters at least. Like, come mm-hmm. on, like I know I played a game they did eventually fix it, but like you had a game where a character only had one arm and they did that, and it was like, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a little jarring with the arms, especially. Like, uh, like, I can argue that they're just changing the patch side on the eye in a microsecond it takes for them to switch over, but like, come on. Yeah, no. Um, and then flip flopping arms. Yeah, and then my husband, um, he got like the love per set from like that um, section we were doing, and so it was like just bonus healing, something to do with that, and then he had an item that would damage opponents when he's healing. Oh, that's cool. Um, okay. And then he has an item because, like, oh, you also get little trinkets. So on top of um, you just your, what you're wearing and your weapon, you also can have a few little extras that will give you a bonus. Um, so, like, his trinket was, like, one where just, like, attack would, would go up as you continue to attack. And then with the bounties, like, the way gear works in all these games, like, you'd find it in the place. And then if you found it again, it would level up. Oh, okay. Oh, um, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I play games like that. Sure. And you can also manually level it up, which is really funny because we manually leveled up some things in some games, and then the quest would, like, go to increase that specific item. And though, so it would jump up a heap, like, and you'd actually, like, save money because it just, it just you know, it went up a set amount of levels, and this set amount of levels was, like, way higher. So <laughs> it's oh, really a bonus, yeah. good luck when we did that. Um, and um, so his was like, yeah, so whenever he healed, he would damage other enemies, he would throw a bomb because, like, whenever he did a spell, he'd do that. Um, so he'd basically pop a heal, pop the shields, and, like, nearly be invincible, aside from, like, a couple times he died. But... <laughs> And also um, doing damage. Yeah, well, it's continue, like, so, like, kind of untouchable because he's being, like, protected and healed while he's just right. in their face. Like, shh, shh. Um, so I'm, I'm saying so far, um, games and hasn't been out for, like, a week yet um, while we're recording. Um, well, I guess a week exactly. Um, <laughs> it's probably one of the most <laughs> broken builds, at least, like, for Cop when there's, like, a second person. Um, I know I was pretty slack on the last few boss fights where I'm, like, just shooting them with my gun. I'm, <laughs> like standing back and then waiting for it to reload or maybe pop a spell but he's just like shredding through their health um yeah so i think that's the main differences um i do they do said that they're gonna do a new world update on this so because i do like i said i do feel like it seems a bit shorter but i don't know if it actually is um and the new world updates are yeah, like new content and stuff but also these games have new game plus and then they have new game and new game is where you put on the challenges like you are always level one or you are okay that's cool have no you know or the opposite we can have no equipment or like you know different modifiers like that which i'm just happy with the games as they are but you know in terms of like really getting into it or making it more difficult that's where you can do that no i I love those i love those like uh, options for people who want a a, a different different experience or a more challenging experience like i've been watching a lot of speed runs or i have in the past watched speed runs of People playing Dark Souls or or Elden Ring, or whatever, and it's like a level one run, or a, mm. you know, just just trying to beat the game with one particular weapon or one spell type or something like that. And I, I think those are fascinating, actually, because you really have to know the game super well, generally, to uh, to, to succeed there. And you can't just buy your way out or or grind your way out, right? You have to you have to kind of figure figure out how the systems work. Yeah. <clears throat> um, one thing that did actually annoy me about this one is in the other games, you'd go near a cave and it would give you like a level for the cave. Um, and this one, it didn't do that. So you just sort of walk in and go, ouch, never mind. <laughs> like the enemies' levels would pop up if you go near them and they're like too high, like, you know, like they're above right, you. It so would you... show, like, so like we go somewhere level 40 and we go there and it says level, the enemies say level 50. We're like, okay, maybe not. Sometimes we could do like 10 levels above us. It was just like, don't get hit, you know, usually, yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But if you get hit, um, guns and magic only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Um, but we had to go in there to see them in the first place, whereas the other games would show us beforehand. Hmm, okay. But yeah, That's we cool. did pretty much everything in there. We even beat Cat Thulu, which we didn't do in the previous game. So, <laughs> so is this so? So yeah. So like, so I guess I'll ask. I'll ask my question now. Then, like, yes. where where do you think people should start with this series, or or what what do you what was what's your ranking of them? I guess. I mean, I don't think there's any reason to not start with the first game, other than you know you can't play that one cult really, but. Um, you know, it's usually on cheap for sale. Um, but all these games you can get pretty cheap even without the sale. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think any of them are particularly like, you know, worse or anything like that. Like obviously 
this one's sort of improved in some ways, um, especially like if you're really into like the build variety and all of that. But then um, I think maybe the second game has a little bit more at the moment. Um, but I said, I don't know the exact time. It's just, I, I think, you know, three is definitely like the best one, but like the other mm. ones are still pretty good, you know? I was looking, I just had a quick look at the Metacritic because I was curious even even when they came out. And so it was uh, 74 for the first one, 76 for the second one, and then 81 for the third one. So there is that kind of upward trajectory of, of each game getting a little bit better. Yeah. Um, at least and reviewing then better, I should say. One, one thing you're talking about earlier with like as they, you know, try to add things. Like, so the first game was made by like three people and now the third game has been made by eight people. So that all mm. makes a difference too. Yeah, of course. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, excellent. Okay, cool. Um, I honestly, those, those discounted prices, I think it makes a lot of sense to just try one or two for sure. You might as well just jump into one unless you really want the co op. Um, uh, but yeah, I, lo- I love that they're discounted. I wonder if they're even on Game Pass or uh, PS Plus at some point. If not uh, already, I'd be curious about that too. Um, so I'll, I'll get into mine, which is kind of, it's very small, uh, m- much shorter than any of your Cat Quest games page. Um, and, and, but it's just one that I've finished reviewing and uh, wanted to chat about. Um, so I was curious if you'd heard about this game. The game is called Castaway. Um, and it's it, if you take one single look at it, you'll know instantly uh, what the inspiration for this game is. Uh, yeah, so have I, you heard of Castaway? I do check the coming soon section of the eShop, which gets a lot harder with all the stuff published by Red Deer Games and yeah, what, what yeah. else have you. Uh, <laughs> so I have seen it. Um, and yeah, one thing, so I was like, I was interested in it, although then I learned a second thing about it, which has me going like, mm, maybe I'm not as interested now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so... <sighs> God, where to even start with this game? So it, it looks it looks very much like a Link's Awakening, like uh, a Zelda Oracle of Seasons or Oracle of Ages type game. It's got that same kind of um, uh, the sprite work or uh, environment, especially Link's Awakening type environment, because this game takes you know as the name would suggest, Castaway takes place on an island. Um, the the premise is that you are um, an adventurer of some sort. You are your spacecraft. I think you're in outer space. Gets kind of shot down from some laser or something like that from the planet, uh, and you crash down onto this island. Um, your your ship is kind of uh, in the water, derelict, you, you, uh, and you're kind of like knocked out, dazed on the beach. Um, and there's these three kind of pterodactyl like creatures that, uh, are kind of like looking over your, over your, uh, your dazed body and the, uh, the two pieces of equipment that you've dropped, uh, I suppose three and your dog, who you've also become separated from. Uh, and so the premise of the game is that you're trying to, uh, rescue your kidnapped dog, um, Along the way, there are three separate dun- sorry, yeah, three separate dungeons that you need to go through in order to accomplish that goal. Um, each dungeon basically has an item. Again, stop me if you've heard this. It's very, very Zelda-like. Um, you get the sword on the beach. You have some basic enemies to defeat. The primary mode of puzzles I- in this form of the game is just pushing boulders to make new paths or pushing boulders to allow yourself to use a hookshot to get to them. The, yeah, so other than your sword, it's just the a pickaxe, which allows you to break some certain kinds of boulders and a hook shot. It's it's pretty basic. Um, the most interesting thing about this game is that it has a second mode that opens up after you beat the adventure mode, the adventure mode or the story mode, basically called the island. Um, and you mentioned Paige about uh, finishing cat quest and having these different kind of uh, difficulty challenges you can access. Uh, you can access after that. Uh, this game has that from the start. So with the island mode, which is basically the story mode, you can choose to do a normal run, uh, an unfair run, which just makes the game very hard, a speed run mode, uh, speed mo- speed run of the game, which I, I, I guess puts a clock on the screen so you can kind of go through it and see how fast you go or gives you a time at the end. Um, you can also put on pacifist, so there's no enemies at all. Uh, and then you can also put on uh, invulnerability or invincibility or something like that. So you can't take any damage, which I guess is basically the same thing. I, I think it's kind of being billed uh, as a game. It could be someone's first Zelda game or first top down kind of uh, Zelda uh, genre type game. Um, you can finish the main story mode in under an hour. I probably finished it in 30 to 40 minutes. Um if you're someone who kind of knows games like this very well, and you've, you've played a lot of these games before, um, this is a harder sell for sure. 
Uh, the nice thing about it is the price point. Uh, I believe in US dollars, it's seven ninety nine, which is nice. Um, I'm not sure about the other uh, e-shops, but uh, I think it's like I think for that, 12-ish Australian. 12-ish yeah. Australian, yeah. Not, not, not too bad, I, I think. Um, the best part of this game, Castaway, is when you finish the story the first time, you unlock another mode, which you know about because it's on the main menu. It's just locked. And it's called the Tower. And the tower uh, sees you go to a part of the island that has like this other kind of dungeon, a tower, I guess. Uh, And uh, through, I believe it's 50 floors, you are making your way through the tower to get to the top. uh, And it's kind of like a roguelike mode. So if you lose all your health, you have to start over from the beginning. There's no carryover. There's no progression from run to run. There is progression within a single run. Uh, and that comes in the form of uh, you collect these coins when you defeat enemies or you open up um, a chest or, or um, uh, pots or whatever. Uh, and once your coin meter gets to, f- once it fills up, you gain a level and you can choose from one of three perks. So you can increase your sword's power, your hookshot power. You can uh, collect half a heart meter. Uh, you only start with two hearts uh, in this mode. So you don't have a lot of life. So increasing the heart meter seems like a good play. Uh, if you're running out of health, you can you can uh, maybe choose health as one of the three options. Uh, you can even choose like this um, power orb or like uh, energy orb that rotates around you and does damage to enemies. Um, as you go through the tower, uh, the 50 floors, uh, one of, some of the floors will just have enemies you have to defeat. Some will have spike floors that you have to kind of roll across quickly as they kind of uh, have a different pattern to them or sequence in terms of being safe or being hazardous. Um, some of the floors, the enemies are actually across from you, across the body of water or, or a little uh, stream or something, and you have to hit projectiles back at them to eliminate them before you can advance to the next floor. Uh, so that's pretty fun too. Um, but yeah, it just just it, it took me only took me a handful of tries to end up getting through the tower. But I thought that that was at least for someone who's a, more of a veteran player of these games. I found the tower the more compelling component of Castaway. So it was nice that that's included as well. I think the package would really be lacking if it didn't have both the tower and the island modes to it. Um, trying to think what else. I think w- once you've kind of done the tower, there's, I guess, if you want to do the unfair mode or the speed run mode, just to see how fast you can beat the story mode, there's that. Uh, there's that that you can do. But again, it's not supposed to be a game that kind of, you know, you're playing for dozens of hours or something like that. that really lingers. I think it's really bite sized and it does a good job of being bite sized. Um, and I kind of like that for what it is. It's uh, it's not trying to necessarily be more than that. Um, my understanding is the developer has thoughts about if, if this game does well to maybe add more components to Castaway or maybe do another game. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it would be in the same genre or whatever, but just to maybe expand on this, the ideas that are here. But yeah, it, it's pretty fun. And I, I would certainly recommend it to if you've got maybe younger kids who haven't really played a Zelda game before and you want them to try something. This this is a pretty decent option for that with the the modes and the, just the, the short length of it. Um and yeah, I, 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 I would recommend it for that. Or again, if you, if you like the kind of, you, you've mentioned like playing cat quest is kind of like a breather or, you know, mm. a little bit of a shorter experience in between something. This is a good change of pace game. That's pretty familiar. Uh, it's comfort food for sure. Uh, and, and I like it for that. Um, I can't find them. I'm trying to like scroll my Steam wish list for them, but I, it does feel like there's um, at least a handful of Link's Awakening like inspired games that are coming out. Like there's always like 2D Zelda inspired games, but specifically like the island aspect of it. Um, and you're starting out on the beach and things like that. I'm seeing like a few in the like being like on Twitter, people are showing off their game. Um, so it's, it's funny that it's like just a common theme. I don't Everyone wants to go to the beach, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's there's, there's nostalgia for that as well. Like if you're you're making a game, you you or you grew up with these games, maybe you want to make your own or something like that. Mm. Uh, or I think the developer had an idea about kind of showing his kids, like you know, getting them into this, this type of genre and these types of games that maybe he grew up with. And so I, I, I understand that aspect of it for sure. Um, this is not like a hardcore Zelda game that that those players would maybe be looking for. Uh, it does have those modes that, that could appease them. But I think this is more uh, maybe if, if you're looking for something just a little bit smaller, a little more bite sized, a little bit more uh, approachable for sure. Uh, and then it has that fun roguelike mode as well. But um, yeah, I, this is definitely something we've seen before. We've seen 
other uh, indie projects where it, it's it's a Zelda like and it's like, OK, how close does this actually uh, look to the the real art of the genuine article, right? I, I think um, this one does lean pretty close. Yeah, I found one of them. Um, I was sort of talking about called Isles of Sea and Sky. It's a lot more puzzle though. I don't know if it even has any mm. combat. It seems to be pretty much like push puzzles, but it has that um, the Game Boy Color look to it. Yeah, although probably a lot more screen space and detail than <laughs> any other his games would have. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. For me, I feel like once I learned about the rogue like sort of mode in the um, Castaway, I was a bit less interested i guess because for me it's like i'm not really into that sort of thing so i would be paying you know 12 bucks for just one hour which yeah technically still fits my ratio of like actually that's fine you know i think when i was um younger i would think you know of a movie or like how many hours do i have to work to pay for this Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and you know with video games the answer is always definitely more than (laughs) more hours per work um so like it still sort of fits that, but it does it does it does fit into that where I'm like I'm not super into the roguelike stuff. Um, I think least- you I think you'd want to do both. I think honestly I, it'd be a harder sell f- for me mm. kind of advertising it to people if you weren't going to at least get into that or give it a try or something like that. If you yeah. if you knew you were only going to enjoy one of these, I think it's a little bit tougher to 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 uh, recommend. So it's like where I'm like I've I've um. Uh, bought, bought the um, Splatoon 3 DLC before it like, was announced and then I'm like, oops, I don't care about this at all now. <laughs> or, um, you know, reason why I didn't play I think Cult of the Lamb until this um, when it first came out, like now the cop update's playing and playing it, but I just misinterpreted you know, that roguelike, roguelite thing because it was showing you, you've got your little village you're building up and I thought I was thinking like, you know, those, those roguelike games where it's like the whole thing, you'll start the whole thing again. I'm like, there's no way I'm starting it. But no, it's just the dungeon specifically. So it's sort of like a mystery dungeon game, except you do get to keep some of the items. Yeah, right. Um, so it's like, it's not actually that bad. <laughs> it's fine. I feel so, like for, for me, like knowing that I'm going to be definitely playing uh, is Echoes of Winds, Echoes of Wisdom is the new Zelda uh, game coming out next month, right? It's uh, Yes. I, I've been I've been trying to go like radio silence oh, on that so game. You I, watch the new trail. I have not watched the new trailer. I <sighs> I, I, I I know it's interesting. And I I would I know I would enjoy it, but I'm like I don't need to be spoiled by any more of the game. I'm already super. I'm already getting it. Like well, I, I, you I'm also already have sold to be on careful that. because there's like stuff that wasn't in the trailer, but like it's getting posted on like the Japanese website, and then people. Oh are like, really? Okay. Yeah, because they're showing yeah. off even more stuff via that. Might like... be time to mute some of those words <laughs> on social media <laughs> then. Yeah, because I, I definitely don't want to see any more. I've been I've definitely been less on social media that would spoil me, like like X for example, Twitter for example. Um, just kind of quite, very casually browsing these days, so I haven't been you know, in places where I think I would see as many spoilers. And I'm actually happy about that. Like the, the that, that Zelda game is one. I, I, I know I love top down Zelda, which is why I wanted to review Castaway. And I, I know I'm going to get into Echoes of Wisdom. And because there's so many different, like there's the, that creative aspect to it. I don't need to see any more like, this is how you could solve this, but I don't need that. Because then I'm going to do that. Like as soon as I see <laughs> the video showing me that way, my brain will be like, this is how you solve that problem. And I'm just going to take that solution. But I'd rather come up with my own solution so i don't don't want to see any more for sure um uh, uh, okay i'll show you something that's not like a mechanic sure apparently this is the first time we've had cats in a zelda game since twilight princess that's i didn't surprising i didn't i didn't like i guess because i'm not a cat person i just straight up didn't notice that none of the other games had cats <laughs> I, I know, I, people, I know yeah. people complained about it in like Breath of the Wild. I'm like, no, isn't there a cat and scout? Is there really no cats and scouts? I know sword? there's, I know there's dogs and horses. Surely yes. there's got to be. Maybe they meant HD, uh, mm. but then HD came out afterwards. There's no cats and scout No, they I mean, have the funny little um, creatures. They were the big ears. It is Skyward hmm. Sword, so maybe it's. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they, they, um, they, they, they don't have cats. They have like these cute little lemur looking things instead um because i'm like yeah i said i know people complained about it in breath of the wild and stuff but i just i just didn't you know i'm not a cat person you can't even pet the dogs in breath of the wild and stuff it's just like they sniff out meat for you um, and right. then they got rid of wolf link and tears of the kingdom which makes me very sad the only the only animals i really associate with zelda at all are uh 
cuckoos or cuckoos, yeah. the chickens, and then uh, horses. And that's pretty much it. Like everything else is like a, a monster or a creature to me. Those yeah. are the only like real life um, animals that I think about. I think, when I, but when I do think of the animals in Zelda, I definitely think Twilight Princess because one, you're like, you'll flink, you talk to them or whatever. That's but true. It's true. Two, like, and that's like, that's why they're everywhere. Cause like I was just playing through it really slowly and I'm like taking a picture of every animal I find in the game because there's just so many there. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, this is funny. I didn't, I just never occurred to me because I don't, yeah, I guess I don't care about them that much. Um, but See, yeah, I'm one of those poor, I'm one of those poor schmucks. I'm still waiting for Twilight Princess to hit Switch before I play it, but it's probably going to be Switch 2 at this point. So I think um, I'm still going to be waiting. But yeah, there's a lot of like, whoa, this hasn't been in one of the Zelda games since this. It's yeah. like it's some tiny thing, and it's like, oh, this hasn't been in something since Zelda 2. And I'm like, wow, mm. that's, that's even longer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm definitely. I uh, I did watch the trailer, and I'm very. I was already excited because I'm just like, oh, I'll play the Zelda, and it's coming out yeah. like two days after my birthday. I'm. So- <laughs> oh yeah, we're, unfortunately, we're definitely- I took my birthday off, and not the day the game comes out, though. So I'll just, I'll just have to suffer. But it's well, or Colin sick, yeah. Is it, is it- <laughs> I uh, I definitely want to do an episode on that game for sure. Oh. Maybe Casey will join us too. I, th- I think he's I think he's interested in that one as well. Um, just to just to move into kind of our last segment. Uh, so we we've talked about Cat Quest uh, three of them, in fact, uh, a little bit about Castaway, which is a, a short game. There's not too much to say, but I do think uh, it's worth having a look at if you like those kind of games. Uh, it certainly has whet my appetite for for more uh, top down Zelda. Uh, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, NSO because I've been playing. I've, I just I finished Super R Type, uh, which I didn't even realize was on NSO. I finished that the other day. It's a really good shooter if you if you haven't played Super R Type uh, and you like you know games like Gradius and stuff like that. Like it's a very good okay. one of those. I, think. I, I need one that's like baby's first but isn't boring because like i've played yeah. a couple uh, there was one where i'm like it seems sort of baby's first but it, like the first level was so slow and so right, long because right. there's so many games i'm playing and it'll be like here's a shooting up segment and i'm like ah! like i'm yeah, not good at that yeah. like um not not side scrolly but like i played um like backer just got announced for an english release um, mm. coming out next month i saw that and i yeah. played the english demo and it had like a more of Star Fox style shooting up level and i was like ow, oh ow, 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 ow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> see I, I think that the tough thing about sh- making shooters easier or, or like having like a baby's first shooter is like the people that like those games they want to play all of them yeah and so they, they, they that that fan base or that sect of the fan base would be like oh this is way too easy like, i'm not getting into it but then the flip side of that is how do you get people into the genre when these games are always really really hard well, <laughs> like what's I the mean, what's the middle ground here? sometimes there's like knowledge where it's like you just don't know and they're like oh like in a lot of shoot up where your character's kind of big the actual part where you get hurt is like a tiny bit in the center of you and sometimes yeah, that's visually right. showing but like you just don't know that like unless someone tells you you know like it's sort of like what, what is the actual hit box here yeah. yeah um like some games you can turn it on or like they, it's like a, a dot on you or something but like you know a normal person just playing games doesn't like doesn't know that you're like you you just go ah i can't <laughs> and it's like oh, ni- i'm actually nice safer with- than i thought the nice thing with something like Super R Type and playing on NSO is that there is the rewind function. So yeah. you, if you if you wanted to like enjoy a game that, and I don't think Super R Type is is all that difficult. I think it's there are much harder games. That it's not like a bullet hell or something like that. It's a lot more methodical. Um, there is some slowdown, but it, it's not it's not the worst. Uh, and if you just stop shooting a little bit, the slowdown improves. The nice thing about Super R Type is you have this module in front of you that kind of defends you, and then you can pick up eventually two modules that go above and below you that also kind of protect you from things and can do damage too so it's it's one of those games where as you build your ship up and obviously a lot of games do this but this one it actually have forms protective barrier kind of around you as your ship gets stronger and then once you get to that point like um as long as you're fairly careful uh leading up to the last stage it's a uh, it's not it's not a i would say it's in the maybe easier half of shooting games and you know, the shooter fans listening out there on the podcast, if we have any you know, skewer me because I, I play a ton of these games, but I know very little about them or something like that. But I, I like super R type a lot. It's cool. You can actually, I... you throw like the module that's in front of you, you can throw it and then it can like shoot from a different part of the screen, which is pretty neat. Wait, no, I'm mad at R type because they did like a newer one, which is apparently kickstarted, but I just picked up a retail release. Mm. And then after that, they're like, Oh, and here's a bunch more, DLC or whatever content. I'm like, oh, that's dumb. Yeah, that always happens with the like, you know, or like games finally get a physical release and they're like, oh, and now we're doing this DLC. And it's like, now oh. we're doing the DLC. It's like, I'm not like. super into it for like the preservationist point of view, but it's also like, well, couldn't you have just 
waited a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wait, wait, and give me the full featured physical version, like you please. Knew you were going to do it clearly, like you obviously yeah. were developing it while you were doing that. So that's right. That's right. Um, so yeah, at any rate, I, <laughs> getting off track, which is what we do on this podcast. Uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit about what, what NSO might look like on Switch Two. So what we think it might look like, and then what do we want it to look like? Because the only the only kind of experience we have is with the Wii going to the Wii U, right? Uh, or I suppose Wii to, Wii U to Switch, if we can chat about that too. But Wii to Wii U, uh, games you bought on your Wii could carry over to your Wii U once they released on the Wii U. But there was an upgrade charge, right? So I think it was a dollar for NES games, maybe two or three dollars, or maybe even up to five dollars for Super Nintendo games, uh, and maybe more for N sixty four games. I don't remember the exact breakdown, but I know there was an upgrade cost. And you couldn't just bring all your games over automatically onto Wii U. You had to pay that, that upgrade fee and they had to be released on Wii U. Mm. Um, of course, with the Wii, you could just you know have your entire Wii library inside your Wii U. You could do that system transfer kind of thing. Uh, but still, if you wanted to play the games, I think on your tablet or maybe with some extra features that the Wii U virtual console had, you had to wait until they actually came out on that platform and then did the upgrade charge. So we have that. We know that from the Wii U virtual console to the Switch, there's no carryover. It's a completely different system. They went from kind of a piecemeal, buy the games as you want them, uh, and then you own them in scare quotes, versus the NSO, which is uh, much more like well, a streaming service. And the right? NSO wasn't straight away, so all we had was like That's the true. hamster arcade ports of things. Oh, which, I bought so many of those when they first they, came out they too. St- and they still make so many. They're still coming, yeah, they're still coming. That's true. So there were other people trying to fill that kind of retro game lineup or le- retro game gap before the NSO came out. I, and I don't mind the hamster games. I like that they all have leaderboards and stuff like that. I think they're pretty decent. Um, but yeah, then you are paying piecemeal and they were a little bit more maybe pricey that way too. Uh, but now that we have the NSO, we know what, look, we know what it looks like. Um, I think there, there's you know some... Some like for it, some dislike, you know, what, why are these games not here? Why is it still very much a drip feed? Why is it not like monthly updates? I think the Genesis hasn't got games in more than a year. So some of the consoles are kind of neglected while others seem to get the bulk of the releases like N64 is getting a lot. Game Boy Advance has gotten a lot, you know, and go figure. Those are the consoles in the expansion pack, which is also another thing, you know, that maybe it will we'll look different on on switch too i don't know um what do you think not so what, what, what do you want Paige? what do you think nso will look like on switch too what is your prediction the same but worse excellent what does that mean <laughs> Just sounds like, great i'm on board i, I think <laughs> maybe like we don't really know what switch two is it's like it's probably yeah they're probably going to keep it sort of the same system okay. um like because yeah, they've got those memberships that have been going on for a while they're still doing deals for them things like that yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, it's just gonna, the emulation's gonna be worse. It's gonna, <laughs> oh, God, it's, can it get worse? I don't the know. The content's gonna be worse. There's gonna be more untranslated games. That <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> that was so funny. Um, it's been happening on the eShop too. And I, I feel like on like certain region eShops, you shouldn't allow it. Like I bought, yeah. Um, I played uh, Euphoria the Saga 2 and then like the game in Japanese is called Hebereke and then it got put onto the like Australian eShop, but like it doesn't have English. And mm. like you know, it's technically playable, but there's dialogue, um, and it's really annoying that it's like able to. It's a, and like there's a bunch of the East games and stuff got put on recently, and they're not right. English. Um, I know that happened at least once or twice on the Wii U because I was going through like the list before the shutdown the other year, and there was like a ZX Spectrum untranslated game on the mm. eShop, and it was like, but at least okay. they told you. There was like a, a strict warning in the yeah. description. They're not like, hiding it. <laughs> um, and then yeah, I, I tried playing like Starfy, and it was like. You know, like you can sort of tell what you're trying to do, but without the dialogue, it's really annoying. And like, yeah, it also something's missing. The text also like auto scrolls, so you can't even like just stop and like get oh, a geez. rough. You can't even get like a bad machine translation because it's already been yeah. <laughs> oh, you're forced to scroll through something that you you're not uh, understanding. But, um, you're just like, why can't oh, we skip this? No, no, no. They're going to release Mother Three untranslated. <laughs> don't, don't you dare! No, there's no way. There's no they way. They did it yeah, with they, never... they did that with four GBA games just then. What do you? It's never, never. Mother Three is never coming. I, I'm, I'm. I used to be like one of those. Uh, I'm. It's coming. It has to be here. It has to be. I, I'm. I'm. I, I'm defeated now. I have no. Idea. Um, I've never switch. Switch to play. ambassador only if you buy the first hundred copies oh, of. <laughs> The being a 3DS ambassador is one of the highlights of my uh, th- uh, my Nintendo ownership career for sure. 
Um, okay, so when you say just like the Switch One, but worse, do you think that Day One Switch Two out of the box has all of the games that we have right now on NSO? Is that your mm. expectation? Well, I did say, but worse, the problem. <laughs> okay, so that's so that's a no. I w- <laughs> Mario I feel Brothers. If you know the Switch Two is basically a Switch Two, then it should. Okay. But okay. I don't know because again, licensing agreements are what you know, so it, it, it's probably going to be slightly different, and then that's going to yeah. be really confusing. Hopefully, they can at least keep it the same. But I would, uh, yeah, I think so. My my expectation of the Switch Two in general is that it's going to be very similar to the the first Switch, and so because of that, I think it'll be very easy for them to just put all the games on NSO onto the whatever NSO is called or looks like on Switch 2. So I, I think it'll be very much the same. Um, what I am curious about is if they add things. Um, so what I what I want it to look like is I want there to be achievements. I want there to be some kind of like, okay, play this game, get a star, get, it won't be trophies, won't be you know Xbox achievements, but it'll be maybe something. There's stars or badges. Nintendo will come up with something cute for it, but that, that's what I would like uh, of, of a revamped NSO. I, I don't know that I would. Ex- I don't. I don't think I expect that because Nintendo doesn't seem to really care no. about <laughs> achievements and personal things like that, or, or you know, scores and stuff. I mean, yeah. There's no. There's no online leaderboards um, at all for or basically for world championships. Before so. the Switch itself came out, I thought maybe we were going to get you know, and they shut down Miiverse like immediately. I thought maybe we were going to get more stamps as achievements because like. You know, in like you um, play like you know Twilight Princess HD, or like this yeah. there's stamps everywhere, and like I figured that would work better as an achievement system because you know back when Mevas were thing, you could show them off. You could be like, yeah, I'm just putting the stamp on here just to show you that I've beaten the game that we're mm. not even talking about right now. But no, they <laughs> they like got rid of Mevas, so no stamps. So those games feel a bit hollower now with that yeah yeah that's funny i I was thinking about me versus the other day too like that that was a way to like show accomplishment and stuff like that and and share things like Um, i didn't i don't can't say i used it that much but i did i did appreciate it and i know a lot of people did like i you know playing mario 3d world without people making certain structures out of pipes is yeah is it it really is it really even a mario game at that point if it's not suggestive (laughs) yeah it's not Um, totally adult themed yeah but yeah in terms of what like i want i guess you know maybe honestly i'd sort of prefer just to have one singular app and then i can switch between instead of having to open and yes close. That, that that's a good improvement thing. for sure yeah. i it is well, annoying. you know i want to, i want actual service i'm like why am i paying for peer to peer hey now now you're really reaching hey you said what i want not what i know you're right you're right, you're right. I said what the, I the sky the sky is the limit like, here we're, we're, if we're dreaming we're, pay, like, we're paying they made us pay for it and they didn't change yeah. anything um like yeah we should be getting actual servers um you know especially like trying to play these games online with people it's uh, second you change countries that's not work- like yeah. in between countries it's not working very well um you are bringing up something i think will change i think the price is going to go up yeah <laughs> you say we're paying it for it i think we're really going to be paying for it next yeah, year I, I think the price is very cheap right now for what it offers especially compared to you know xbox price went up playstation plus price went up uh i should say xbox uh, game game pass went up or and they have those like crazy tiers now. I, I think I think Switch is. I don't know if it'll. I think it may still have tiers like the regular and the expansion pass. I think they're both going up. Um, the family pass is still a very good deal. I don't know if it'll be that good of a deal when Switch Two comes out. I'm not sure, but I think they're definitely going to charge more for that stuff. Um, I hope that's not. not something I want. But that like is, Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo never does anything sensible. So like, of course they're going to jack it up, even though they don't have as much to offer compared to the other systems. Um, offer I did... less and charge more. That that's mm. that's my prediction. I I like actually quit my PlayStation um, Plus because they increased the price for nothing. So yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm like lapse you know if I'm playing a game like if I was playing Monster Hunter or online or something, then I'd do it because, like, I actually, before they shut the PS5, PS Plus collection, you know, I, like, got rid of my physical copy because it was part of mm. that. So I'm like, well, yeah, I, need, sure. I, I need it to play it anyway. But, like, I think we bought it on PC anyway, so it was just <laughs> anyway. But, you know, like, if there's a game I feel like playing in the moment, I'll get, like, a month. Although I've said that I'd, I'm about to get charged for my Game Pass because I got, like, a free Game Pass code to play two oh, games. Yep, yep. Um, And now I have only played, like, a level of one of them. So. <laughs> in that entire month <laughs> you know it's not i, I honestly yeah. i'm the same as you i haven't played game pass in a while probably last time i booted up was diablo and i know there's a new season which i do want to check out but 
yeah, I played Diablo like a month or two ago. I just haven't done Game Pass. I haven't really yeah. done PlayStation so for me, very much at all either. Expansion Pass and like that, I do that with family. Like it was cheaper than buying three copies of the Animal Crossing DLC, you know, um, for yes. different people. Um, and I do, like I said, I played Paper Mario using the Expansion Pass. Like I do use it enough anyway. Mm-hmm. Same, um, yeah. I do wish that they added more expansions to it. Like, because you know, it's called the Expansion Pass. They did add Splatoon 2 DLC to it. Yeah. Oh, and then the Mario Kart tracks are there too, right? Which yeah, is, but like, which it was nice. a couple, like a a Mario couple Kart. new games, but like it wasn't, it was like, okay, why don't we get Xenoblade DLC or Fire Emblem, like, you know? Like, oh, cool. yeah, the Xenoblade 3 DLC would be awesome. I, I would love that. Then that's a good call. You're right. We've only gotten a handful, a, we've a got couple Mario of Kart's, We've got Mario Kart and Animal Crossing, and then they added Splatoon 2, and like Splatoon after, because it was, because the expansion pack was like before after that and then they That's sometime right. into it they were like i guess there's like a pre-thing to splatoon 3 they're like i, I guess we should give somebody DLC something for, for the, this extra money um, <laughs> yeah so i want Splatoon 3 dlc there, there is <laughs> dlc for splatoon 3 right if they're gonna, yes, there is, but that's not in yeah. the expansion pack. Like, that's what I mean. Yeah, not, They've not released yet. several new games with expansions and then not put them in the expansion pack. Yeah, um, that's weird. So if they're gonna up the price, they should at least do that. You know, at least do that. Agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, more more expansions in the expansion pass if that does exist. The reason I, the reason I wanted to bring up NSO was because my my kids have been so I was playing Super R Type, which I mentioned to finish that, and then my kids have one we wanted me to play Donkey Kong. I don't even know where this came from. Maybe because we saw like the new Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo World that's opening at Florida that has a Donkey Kong part to it. They're like, oh, yeah. we want to see more Donkey Kong. So I'm like, okay, let, let's see how fast Daddy can beat Donkey Kong Country on NSO. So so I've been playing it with them. And we've I, I haven't, I didn't do like the whole two hour game or hour and a half game in like one go. We've been doing like a world per night or something like that. Yeah. But they've had fun kind of watching me play that one. And, and obviously it's a pretty tricky game. So uh, they they don't really want to play it themselves right now, but they, they are very happy to watch and see all the characters and stuff like that. So we, we've been having fun uh, on Donkey Kong. And I, I just got me thinking about like, oh, there's a lot of good games here that I really like and I just don't really go back to them. But I think now with the kids kind of wanting to see more of those old games, like I, I am maybe going to take more advantage of uh, what's um, on the NSO right now. They need to put more of the Rare games on the N64 app still because there's no Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, yeah. Listen, they've added a mature app and then they didn't give us Conker's Bad Fur Day. And like Conker's mm-hmm. Bad Fur Day has like five multiplayer modes. That, like, that mature were- section almost feels like tailor made for conquer. So yeah. I, I got to believe that's coming. Diddy Kong um, racing is another one. I really hope yeah. we see soon. I'd love to play that. Yeah. There's definitely a, a lot of N64 games. Smash how smash bros not on N64. Like, come on, that's an easy, yeah. but yeah, a lot of good games that I'd like to see added soon. But again, we're now that we're getting close to the end of the switch. I think it's time to start thinking uh, about those really games being added funny. on switch too. Right. Um, Cause they're like, Oh, they do. Re- um, you don't even know what you're getting. We're still, everyone still wants Pokemon, but they're not doing it. But then we get yeah, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, it. but that game got a remake. That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I guess and it's only red. It's not blue because blue came to DS, right? Yeah. So you just get the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah, they're pretty much the same game. So that's right. That, it's true. That's true. That's true. It's just, it's just when you, you see something called red, you're like, oh, where's blue? I, <laughs> I wonder if people will be wondering that. But. Um, but yeah, no. Why don't we why don't we wrap it up here? That was pretty good. Um, did over, got to over an hour, so that that, that was nice. Um, I want to thank Paige for joining me to tell us all about Cat Quest. Uh, she is a Cat Quest expert now. So if you have mm-hmm. questions for her, you can find her on social media. Paige, are you still are you still posting on social media? Yeah, I, I I'm so know. alone on Twitter. Um, okay. and Instagram <laughs> and stuff. So <laughs> are you still doing YouTube videos? And I, I did help one person's video. Um, okay. I will go to double check his channel name because it's his second channel. Um, so uh, someone I know did a twelve hour retrospective on ah, a twelve hour retrospective on pretty much all these Star Wars video games that he was able to oh, nice. actually get his hands on. Um, so yeah, a bit more Jordan is the channel. Um, okay. And yeah, so I covered uh, one game for that. That's cool. Cool. Him. Good for you. So, nice. yeah, somewhere in the 12 hour video I... <laughs> you gotta watch um, the whole 12 hour video to find page well I, I was i was talking to some people about like, whether I, c- I keep doing it because like i said i've quit reviewing um yeah, yeah i do have some i've realized i've had some technical issues with working my software on my computer so like mm. maybe if i eventually fix that then it'll be easier to edit and then it'll be more yeah likely sure, to do sure. It. um i think it's, i've got some ideas but like i look at the time it would take to do that and i'm like mm. yeah Mm, or I could yeah, just yeah. I could just play video games. That's right. Why not just, why not just what's, enjoy games? What's happened yeah. is a change that I've had a kid, so now I basically live in the lounge room and not here. If I lived in my computer room, 
I could just record gameplay as I'm playing it, but like I'd rather right. I'm in the catch. I, I don't have a thing to record. Things yeah. things are a little bit different. Yes, mm. yes. Life life is getting in the way. Yes. Um, your your baby's still napping pretty well, or how many naps are you? Two or three naps right now? She does one um, on okay. the weekends. It's pretty big, but like at, yeah. at daycare, she's like half an hour, <laughs> and then yeah. she's like the oh, worst geez. in the evening because she doesn't have enough sleep. Right, she doesn't have enough sleep. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cute. Um, yeah, but uh, let's 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 call it there. Thanks, Paige, for joining me. Thanks everybody for listening out there. I uh, hope you enjoyed hearing about Cat Quest, Castaway, and some of our uh, thoughts about the NSO, what that might look like uh, going forward. I'm sure we will find out more soon. Uh, but uh, that's all for this week. Uh, I think Casey and I are planning to record another episode soon. Uh, David's obviously a little bit preoccupied. If you are a Patreon uh, subscriber and you saw his message, uh, we're just trying to uh, kind of pitch in a little bit while he's uh, preoccupied with other stuff but uh, we'll be back again soon with another episode of the thirsty mage bye for now bye